This video, we're going to give you the best build for the GS Manga Deagle fully automatic pistol that got added with the Season 3 Reloaded update. First, we'll tell you how to unlock this gun quickly. So first, you do need to get 10 headshot kills using sidearm pistols. Now, if you do want to do that challenge, that's up to you. But after watching this video, you might decide to change your mind. It's quite easy to do. You might want to do it in Plunder. You might want to do it inside DMZ if you've got the free to play version of the game. If you do have multiplayer, obviously that's going to be the easiest place to do this. Uh, but overall, it needs to be on operator kills. It can't be killing AI, unfortunately. Now, obviously, there was a lot of changes to other weapons in this game, so we're going to give you a good loadout that you can use with this gun as well. So, starting off with the M4, this is a long-range M4 build because the Hemlock did get nerfed. The TAC-56 is a good option, but also the M4 is a solid choice as well. Now, when it comes to optics, you could choose whatever one you like, and then the tuning is what you're seeing on screen at the moment. Uh, then, when it comes to the mags, the 60 rounds is an absolute must, especially in the larger scale game modes, but... Uh, if you play solos, then 45 should be good enough as well. F-Tac Ripper is definitely the best underbarrel grip here. It's going to give you the best possible stabilization and the attachment tuning is what you see on screen at the moment. Uh, then we are using the high tower barrel. The reason for that is because it gives you bullet velocity, damage range and a recoil control all in the one attachment. And the way you tune it is as you see on screen. And then lastly, we are using the Zulu suppressor. I've went over so many times why this is the best suppressor in the game. And again, this is how you tune this attachment right here. When it comes to the GS Manga, this is such a weird weapon that I don't think is going to be popular in any way. It's not really that versatile, to be honest. Um, there's only one way I'd recommend using it, uh, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But if you do want to use a single fire, uh, or a single weapon for that matter, then you do go for this build right here. So we are using the Triant 50 barrel, which is the longest possible barrel for this gun. It gives you the best control. Uh, again, we are using a muzzle on this for the best possible control, which is the Flash 50. Uh, we are using the Underbarrel Grip, which is the Bruin Warrior, for the best possible control once again. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. Uh, six, 13 round mags, uh, which is the largest available, which I do think you need on this weapon. And then we are using the Wood Grain Rear Grip, which is going to give you Spout to Fire and Aim Down Sight Speed. You could take an extra control, but I don't really think you need it, to be honest. Uh, and as you can see here, there's a Kimbo build that will show you in just a second as well. So here's the single weapon in game firstly, and this gun does move a little bit slower than some of the other pistols in the game. Uh, and it just basically handles very similar to uh, the Deagle pistol. And as you can see here, it is fairly automatic. It does pack a punch, it does do a lot of damage, but as you can see, it burns through ammo very quick. And at range, it's very hard to control, even with all the controlling attachments on here. Now, granted, we don't have it tuned, unfortunately, because uh, we don't have the gun maxed out. But uh, even with all the controlling attachments, you should be able to land some shots at this range right here. Uh, and I am trying to control the recoil as well, but you just unfortunately cannot do it. And that is just because it's a high damage weapon. Now that brings me to the build that I actually do recommend on this gun and that's an akimbo build because basically you need to use this at point blank range otherwise it's kind of pointless. Um, so you do want to have the akimbo attachment on there, that's the first thing. Uh, 13 round mags once again, I mean it's just the largest mags available. Uh, and then we are using the overpressured because it's going to give you target flinch. As you can see here, using this barrel blocks off the muzzles. Uh, so that is something you need to keep in mind. And this barrel gives you the best horizontal control. But the only con to this is aim down sight speed, which you won't be doing anyway because it's an akimbo. So that's why we chose this barrel in particular. Uh, then we are using the X9 foregrip, which gives you uh, hip fire accuracy, which is obviously the main thing we're looking for here. Uh, but it cons your hip walking speed and aim down sight speed, so just obviously keep that in mind as you're using this gun. Uh, and that is pretty much uh, this build. Over pressure just because we get target flinch and it's a spare attachment slot that we do want to use. Now trying this out in the firing range, as you can see here, it's quite difficult to land your shot, so you do need to be pretty much point blank range. Uh, but this gun does output a ton of damage and I think in Akimbo is where you'll see this gun shine and it probably overtakes some shotguns for a little while anyway, especially since each bullet you can see does a ton of damage and if you're pretty much like barrel stuffing you will get some really fast TTK kills with this, I can pretty much guarantee that. Uh, but it is difficult to control even in a Kimbo to be fair, so that's something you just need to keep in mind when using this weapon. Overall, I do think people will try and use it in a Kimbo for a while, it'll probably get nerfed and then people won't use it again to be honest. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and thank you very much for watching.